Good morning. Oh, there we go. Good morning. Welcome to church. It's lovely to have you with us. Find a seat, please. Grab a tea, grab a coffee. The hatch is still open if you haven't got one of those. Come and find a seat and we are going to make a start. It's great to see you here this morning. My name's Andy. I'm the vicar here. If you don't know me, please come and say hi afterwards. If you are visiting for the first time in church today, it is lovely to see you. We would love to get to know you a little bit more. If you've been here new for a few weeks, please make sure you fill in one of the welcome cards. You can either, whoop, you can either fill it in and stick it in the basket or you can scan the QR code on your phone and that will take you through to uh, be able to fill in your details. And we'll get in contact with you. We would love to do that. Every now and again, or quarterly, we have a welcome brunch, which just explains something about life in church, who we are, what we're about, and um, it's a way just to get to know a few people and a way to know how we do things. So if you're new, visiting, please sign the welcome card. If there isn't one in your chair in front of you, there are loads at the back on the welcome desk, so please make sure you find one of those. If you're a regular church member, you should get your weekly news through an email around about midday on a Friday. If you're not uh, on our email system and would like to be, fill out a welcome card. Otherwise, there are some paper copies at the back of church we would love you to take with you. Two things just to draw your attention to today is that this afternoon we have um, our prayer time, time to pray, which Sarah is going to be leading, and we are looking at our mission partners, so the Church Mission Society, the Bible Society, Tear Fund and chat. We're going to pray for them for all that they do at this time. And then on Wednesday, I expect to see you all about seven o'clock on Wednesday. Is that right? Can anybody tell me what's happening? And your church meeting. We would love to see you Wednesday night, seven o'clock here. We're going to um, explore some of the business of the church that we have to do, explore something about where God is leading us, and to pray and worship together. So please join us for that seven o'clock on Wednesday. That we're still looking for people to join the PCC, so if you think God might be speaking to you, I'm pretty sure he is speaking to some of you today. When I used to do youth work, we used to ask for volunteers, and then we would ask the Holy Spirit to help us to choose volunteers. (laughs) So uh, who knows how the Lord might work today with the PCC. Do you want to stand with me? And why don't you just for 10 seconds turn around to the people around you, say, welcome to church, it's great to see you this morning, go for it. Welcome to church. It's great to have you with us. I'm going to pray and then we're going to sing in worship to God. Let me pray for us. Faithful one whose word is life, come with saving power to free our praise, inspire our prayer and shape our lives for the kingdom of your son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the people of God said, let's sing in worship together. I 
see a generation rising up to take their place. Selfless faith, selfless faith. I see a near revival stirring as we pray and see on our Heal my heart and make it clean Open up my eyes to the things I'm seeing Show me I to love like you Have loved me Break my heart for what brings yours Everything I am your kingdom's cause as I walk from up into eternity. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the Giants come calling my name My God is so much bigger than the troubles I face Why would I hunger for power or riches or fame My God is so much better than all of these My 
God is bigger, better, stronger, greater than you. There's no mountain too high, no valley too low. There's no fear that I have. He does not arm and he knows. There's no problem too big. There's no weapon too strong. There is nothing for God. That is impossible And I won't be shaken I won't be moved My God is faithful His promise is true So I speak to the mountains Which time to do God is bigger, better, stronger, greater, bigger, better, stronger, greater, yes, bigger, better, stronger, greater, bigger, better, stronger, greater, you. Oh man, our God is bigger, better, and stronger, greater than any other things around us. So Lord, we come to you this morning as men and women seeking you once more. Lord, we pray that you would remind us once again of your power at work in our lives. So as we stand together as your church, we stand in awe, we stand amazed. And Lord, we gather as men, women, boys and girls whose lives are in very different places. And we pray that today that you would join us together looking with our eyes fixed on you. Amen. Uh, young people and uh, children are going to head on out. Please take a seat. And uh, as they head on out, so there's uh, Explore with Debbie and the team. There is 2TF with uh, Jonathan and Luke. This morning, let's pray for them as they go, shall we? Lord Jesus, we thank you so much for uh, your church um, that is younger than us. Lord, we thank you for your church that is led by your Holy Spirit. And Lord, we pray for these children and young people as they go out this morning, that you would be speaking, working, and uh, helping them to love and learn more about you. We pray for their leaders. We pray that you would equip them in Jesus' precious name. Amen. We're going to spend a time just uh, thinking all about what God is up to in our lives. And often that means putting a mirror up to our lives and we realize how much we are not doing in the light of who God is. So we're going to take a moment just to recall those things where we perhaps, uh, where we have stepped out of line with God today. We're going to call back in those moments and times when we know we have not done the things that he's asked us to do. So let's take a moment of silence, shall we, just to hold fast for who God is. To be reminded of the things where we should have done things differently. And I pray a prayer for and on our behalf. If you respond with the words in the yellow, please. Jesus Christ, risen Master and triumphant Lord, we come to you in sorrow for our sins and confess to you our weakness and our unbelief, that we have lived by our own strength and not by the power of the resurrection. In your mercy, forgive us. Lord, hear us and help us. We have lived by the light we have lived for this world alone and doubted our home in heaven. In your mercy, forgive us. Lord, hear us and help us. So may the God of love and power forgive you and free you from your sins. May he heal and strengthen you by his spirit and raise you to new life in Christ our Lord. Amen. If you'd like to stand, we're going to sing a song which talks about being remade with the power of God in his Holy Spirit. Please stand. Let's worship together. these 
its pieces broken and scattered in mercy gathered mended and whole empty handed but not forsaken you've been set free I've been set free amazing sit down. Let's pray. Uh, I've got a response from uh, this morning's reading, which uh, goes like this. Uh, Lord, when I say, Lord, fan into the flame the gift of your spirit, please uh, respond. Give us power, love, and self-discipline. Can you manage that? Lord, fan into the flame of the gift of your spirit. Give us power, love, and self-discipline. First, we pray for our world. In his Easter reflection in the Times, the evangelist J. John says how the eyewitness accounts of Jesus' death reveal many flawed human beings. The jealous religious hierarchy, the panicky governor, the fleeing disciples, and the brutal soldiery. And we see that in so many places today, whether it's Sudan, Ukraine, Myanmar, and not least in Israel and the surrounding nations. Lord, may your light shine and minimize these flaws wherever possible. We pray for more truthful narratives and reasonable voices. We pray for Christians, your people, living with persecution and for leaders faced with impossible choices. Please help, Lord, in your world. Lord, fan into the flame the gift of your spirit. Give us power, love, and self-discipline. In our own land, another has written that all our post-Christian society has delivered is confusion, a mental health crisis in the young, and the culture wars. Lord, we pray for more and more voices of 
sense and renewed respect, not just for our Christian heritage, but also for the true faith that undergirds it. As many members of parliament prepare to stand down, we pray for the candidates that replace, that replace them to be motivated by goodwill and a just and peaceful spirit, strong enough to question atheistic and anti-Christian ideologies. And especially we pray at this time for a proper care for young people. Lord, fan into flame the gift of your spirit. Give us power, love and self-discipline. In our wonderful series this, week, this month about heroines, as we think about heroines of the Bible, we thank you for the example of all those who quietly make a big difference the heroines and the heroes that we see around us. And we pray for all that we know, those living out their faith in health, education, business or government. We thank you for Christian parents and for our youth leaders. We pray for Jonathan and his team and for Paul Friend and the work of Southwest Youth Ministries. Please help them as they support young people through the maze of conflicting narratives, genuine questions, smartphones, peer pressures, and especially this term, exams. We pray for all in our congregation who are facing exams especially. We thank you too for the role of Christian camps like Spree, DCYC, Lee Abbey and CPAS Ventures and others. And we pray for more people to hear the call to serve as camp leaders this summer. Lord, fan into flame the gift of your spirit. Give us power, love and self-discipline. In a moment of quiet, we remember before you, Lord, any who are especially on our hearts today, whether through various forms of stress or ill health. Lord, we place them into your hands this day. In our church news, the this week's prayer goes like this. Loving Father, please help us to recognize the gifts that you give each of us to share the gospel, young or old, in health and sickness, in wealth or poverty, whoever and wherever we can be of service to you. Help us to see those gifts in others and in ourselves and live faithfully throughout our whole lives. And Lord, we pray that especially for our church this week as we have our annual meeting. We pray that all the roles will be filled. And we pray for a PCC and a project group that can steer us up to and through a successful renovation of our church rooms that will serve your work in this town and community for many years to come. Lord, please fan into flame the gift of your spirit. Give us power, love, and self-discipline. Amen. reading is from the second book of Timothy, not as on the screen, hopefully, <laughs> I'm reading the right one. So we're reading 2 Timothy, chapter 1, verses 1 to 7. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus, by the will of God, in keeping with the promise of life that is in Christ Jesus, to Timothy, my dear son, grace, mercy, and peace from God, the Father, and Christ Jesus, our Lord. I thank God, whom I serve as my ancestors did, with a clear conscience, 
as night and day I constantly remember you in my prayers. Recalling your tears, I long to see you so that I may be filled with joy. I am reminded of your sincere faith, which first lived in your grandmother Lois and in your mother Eunice, and I am persuaded now lives in you also. For this reason, I remind you to fan into flame the gift of God, which is in you through the laying on of my hands. For the Spirit does not... The Spirit gave us... Sorry. For the Spirit God gave us does not make us timid, but gives us power, love and self-discipline. This is the word of the Lord. Thank you, Wendy. Good morning. My name is Sarah, if I haven't met you before. I'm part of the staff team here while I have a placement training for ministry. And this morning, as has already been said, we're continuing on in this series, Heroines of the Bible, looking at some women whose stories in the Bible are so small that they are easily overlooked, but who made a great impact through those small acts of courage and faith. So before we get stuck in, let's pray. Lord, thank you that you are always drawing us to yourself. Thank you that you are a God who uses small things to do great things. And I pray for each of us this morning that we would hear you speaking to our hearts and our minds, that we would take something on board of your truth and your love and your goodness. In Jesus' name, amen. So we began this series at the 9 a.m. service a couple of weeks ago, looking at the story of Rhoda. Then last week, we were hearing about Abigail. If you've missed either of those, you can look back on our YouTube channel and have a listen. I'd encourage you to do that. Today, we're looking at two more women, Lois and Eunice, the grandmother and mother of Timothy. Timothy, you might recall, was an apprentice to the Apostle Paul. He accompanied him on many of his missionary journeys and he represented Paul when he was imprisoned. Timothy had a great impact on the early church, spreading the gospel to many areas. Now we don't hear much about Lois and Eunice. Verse 5 of that passage that Wendy just read for us is the only time that they are named in the Bible. But they clearly, in Paul's opinion, had a great impact on Timothy. Here he is reminding Timothy of their faith, which they've passed on to him. He's reminding Timothy to hold on to those roots of faith with confidence. So for the next few minutes, we'll be thinking about what it was about Lois and Eunice that was so significant for Timothy and what we can learn from that today. We don't get to hear from this reading what it was about Lois and Eunice that had such an impact on Timothy. Did they disciple him to learn great tracts of scripture by heart? Quite possibly, since Lois, his grandmother, was a Jew. Or did they inspire him by some courageous acts of faith or by the way that they quietly lived from day to day? We just don't know, but I think Paul captures the essence of what was so significant about them in verse 5 when he says, I am reminded of your sincere faith, which first lived in your grandmother Lois and in your mother Eunice, and I am persuaded now lives in you also. Sincere faith. That is what Paul is homing in on. Lois and Eunice were clearly known for a deep trust in God, which must have shaped the way they lived to such a positive extent that they were a critical influence on Timothy becoming a follower of Jesus himself, developing a deep faith that enabled him to lead others to Christ and to spread the gospel even in really difficult circumstances. 
Now, with the hindsight that we have with the full story of Timothy, we can look back and infer all of that about Lois and Eunice. But I'm sure when they were teaching him and nurturing him at the ages of maybe two and ten, and maybe when he was a teenager, they had no idea of what he would go on to do. They would have no clue that we would still be reading about him and talking about him 2,000 years later. Their work to teach and inspire him was an act of love and faith, offered with no guarantee of return or reward. They are an example of the impact of taking seriously the call to pass on the faith we have received from others, but doing so without ever really knowing the full outcome of that effort. So it's this idea of sincere faith that I want to focus on this morning. And it makes me think about a relay race when you pass on the baton. It's a little while since I've run a relay race. But there's always that really tense bit, isn't there, when the baton gets passed on and you think, is this going to work? Are they gonna, am I going to catch it? Are they going to pass it to me properly? Am I going to drop it? Am I going to lose vital seconds? And I think that passing on can be a helpful analogy for us in terms of faith as Christians. But it's also not a brilliant analogy because uh, passing on faith is not all about us. It's not all about our ability and our strength and our confidence. It's the Holy Spirit who makes this impact. It's all about him, not about us having amazing opportunities to connect with lots of people. In the kingdom of God, the world's values are turned upside down, and we are called to be humble and faithful, relying on God so that as we hold out that baton of faith for other people, he does the work to pass it on. We are called to reflect the grace and compassion of Jesus, who had faith to follow what God asked him to do. He had the humility to step down and be with us on earth, to show us what God is like, and even to die on the cross, to overcome the power of death in his resurrection, so that we can all be reconciled with God and with one another. When we are humble and faithful before an amazing God, as I believe Lois and Eunice must have been, God can do more through us than we will ever imagine. I wonder if you can think back to somebody who had a significant impact on your journey of faith. That might have been a parent or a grandparent, or perhaps it was a friend or a colleague. It might be that that is a story that's unfolding for you right now if you are new or returning to church. For most of us, a journey of faith, finding out more about the Bible, about who God is, about why Jesus matters, begins because somebody else points us towards all of that. If you began that journey as a child, it may be that you didn't have a huge amount of choice in it. I doubt that Timothy had a huge amount of choice in learning the scriptures. But hopefully that was a positive beginning and you have chosen to continue it. Or it might be that somebody shared a testimony of how God worked in their life. Or you noticed something about them that intrigued you and you wanted to know more about what faith meant for them. Somebody will have held out the baton of faith for us. Maybe several people have done that in lots of different steps through our lives. But I wonder who God is calling you to hold out that baton of faith for today as you pass that faith on to others. It may be that for you that comes through a sustained relationship as it did for Lois and Eunice as mother and daughter and then as grandmother and mother to Timothy. As close family, they must have taught and prayed and discipled him in a million different ways over the years. And some of us will have that opportunity to share Bible stories and to pray with younger members of our family, which is a wonderful way to pass on faith. But it's not the way for all of us, and it doesn't have to be that. 
It may be that there are one-off conversations or encounters that pass on something of your faith to someone else, and you may not even realize that has happened. So I'd like to share with you this morning three different ways in which I have seen faith passed on. And I hope they will be an encouragement to you to live out your faith just as you are, with whatever amount of faith you think you have, confident that the Lord will work through your words and actions in ways you would never expect and may never know about. The first example comes from my godmother, a wonderful lady who is now almost 80 years old. She got to know my mum when they were in their early 20s. Ruth never married or had children, but she had hordes of godchildren, of which I was fortunate to be one. But I always lived a long way from her. When I was a child, she lived in Portsmouth, and we lived in North Yorkshire, so I didn't see her very often. But she always remembered me at birthdays and Christmas, and occasionally she would come and visit us. And from the age of when I was about eight or so, we started to write to each other more often than just birthdays and Christmas. I'd write to her and I'd tell her about school and my pets and my friends, and she'd write to me and tell me about her work. She was a nurse and about her church. But really, she wanted to know what was going on with me. Surprisingly enough, she didn't often say anything about God or the Bible. She didn't kind of prod me as to where I was with all of that. She was mostly just wanting to know how I was. And once when she visited me, she took me shopping in York. I think I must have been about eight. And I remember we went into WH Smith's and she bought me this pink sparkly pencil. I can still remember it. And I had it for years. And I think it just reminded me of Ruth when I was far from her. It reminded me that she was somebody who cared about me. And I think in hindsight, I have probably already noticed something about her as a person of faith. But it wasn't until I was in my early 20s and I visited her when we really talked about faith, when I was wrestling with some big questions about whether the Bible was really true and what was so important about Jesus and the cross. And she sat and she listened and she answered my questions as best she could with gentleness and wisdom. Ruth was a really key person for me in coming back to faith very shortly after that. And whilst I might have thought that that was the product of us just being in touch, almost pen pals, for 20 years, I realized the real impact of her on my life when she said to me one day, I've prayed for you since you were born. Years and years of prayer probably silent prayer, solitary prayer, prayer that might have at times felt deeply unanswered. Ruth is a person of sincere faith, and that's the sort of Lois and Eunice impact we're talking about here. Not because I think I'm about to be the next Timothy, but that sustained faithful effort to keep praying for someone, even if you don't see them very often, even if they seem far from God, even if your prayers don't seem to be answered. It's that tenacity and persistent prayer and care for others that can make the difference. My second example is much more fleeting, comes from a similar time when I was back at university. I didn't go to church at that time. I had done as a child, but I thought it was all somewhere between boring and odd. Um, And so I dropped all of that by university. But I met a student um, when I was at Durham called Kath, and she was a really committed Christian. We didn't uh, spend a lot of time together. We didn't have very many lectures together. She lived in a completely different part of town to me. But I remember clearly one day going to her room in college and realizing that she had Bible verses stuck around on her wall. And I thought, oh no, this could get really awkward. 
somehow the, church, the conversation got round to all of that, to church and faith and what that meant to her. And I remember her saying, well, Jesus is like my best friend. And I have to tell you, that was not a light bulb moment of spiritual revelation for me. If anything, it just made Kath a bit more odd than I already thought she was. I just thought she needed to get out a bit more, to be honest. And yet those words stuck with me. And when I was asking my godmother, Ruth, those big searching questions, Kath's words were still with me. Jesus is like my best friend. And I started to be intrigued by that. What did that mean? And what could that mean for me? And then I started going back to church again, and I tried to get in touch with Kath using an email address that I had for her, but it bounced back. And I'm, I didn't have any other way of being in contact with her. We had no mutual friends. So to this day, I don't think she has any idea of the impact that she had on me. But that's an example of somebody just being willing to live out their faith, trusting in the Holy Spirit to work through them, even if that is at times uncomfortable. That is the faithful work of passing on faith that we need to be bold enough to persist in. Now, for some of you, you might be thinking, well, I'm not bold, and I'm not very confident about what I believe, and I don't really think that I can do this stuff. So my last example is for you, for those of you who think that God is probably never going to use you. Some of you will know that last year my mum died after a long um, illness with severe dementia. She lived for 10 years in a care home near us, and she was unable to walk or talk or do anything for herself for most of that time. And there was one member of staff in the care home who looked after her for that whole decade. And after mum died, I gave the staff a small cash gift just to say thank you for what they had done for my mum. And a few weeks later, I met this member of staff who'd looked after my mum for so long. And I just met her in the street by chance. And she said, Sarah, look, look what I bought with that present from your mum. And she showed me that she was wearing a sparkly cross, a pendant on a chain. And I was completely taken aback. I was rushing to get my children to school at the time. But she said, this just seemed the right thing to buy. And now when I look at it, I remember your mum. My mum, yes, had a long-standing faith, but it was a very quiet faith, and she was unable to articulate it at all in the time that she was at that care home. I had told the staff that she had a background of going to church, but I believe somehow the Lord had still worked through my mum, even in that massively incapacitated state. Something of God's goodness and grace was communicated to that member of staff. No, she wasn't saying that she'd become a Christian. She wasn't saying that her life was transformed. But she'd received something positive that spoke to her about sincere faith something of a stepping stone along her journey of faith. So I hope something of those stories encourages you today to trust that God can work even through you in your small acts of day-to-day -day faith, of passing on that faith to others, just as he worked through Lois and Eunice to build up Timothy's faith. Let's be people of sincere faith, who are intentional and persistent, who are trusting the Holy Spirit to draw people to God through our small efforts to pass on that baton of faith. The band are going to lead us in a song now, I Will Build My Life, and I'd encourage you to use that as a response to what I've just shared with you. You can sit or stand for this, and our prayer ministry team, Tessa and Aubrey, will be available over here on your right. Um, if you would like somebody to pray with you, to help you think through those things, maybe to have courage as you think about how you can pass on faith to others. Thank you.
Worthy of every song we could ever sing Worthy of all the praise we could ever bring Worthy of every breath we could ever bring Live for you Jesus, name above every other name. Jesus, the only one who could ever save. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. We live for you. We live for you. Holy, there is no one like you. There is none beside you. Open up my eyes in wonder and show me who you are and fill me with your heart and lead me in your love to those around me. I will Build my life upon your love. It is the firm foundation, and I will trust my trust in you alone. And I will not be shaken, and I will build my life upon your love. And I will put my trust in you alone And I will not be shaken Holy, there is no one like you There is none beside you Open up my eyes in wonder Show me who you are and fill me with your heart Lord God, we thank you that you call us to be your people, that you want us to build our life on you, that you want us to put our trust in you. And we thank you for the faithfulness of the family to Timothy that we read about in Scripture. But Lord, we recognize that's a long time ago, and we want to thank you now for the men and women who have poured into our lives whether we've known them for a long time or whether we've only just met them and we just get a sense that they're praying for us, encouraging us, supporting us. And Lord, we thank you for them. And Lord, maybe we find ourselves being one of those people encouraging others. Would you instill in us confidence to say, can I pray for you? courage to say let me stand with you 
and the ability to find some words, even in even through perhaps a stuttering, not sure quite what to say type of way that helps us to stand alongside those. And maybe some of you are godparents, but you've never really considered uh, what that means to pray daily for those children that have been entrusted to you once upon a time. So if you're a godparent now, we're just going to have a little moment just to for you to bring to mind those children who your godparents to. So we do that. And we pray for those children who were baptized perhaps many years ago. And we bring them to mind and we pray, Lord, wherever they are now, would you speak to them through your Holy Spirit? Would you equip them, nurture them, love them? If there are men, women, boys and girls on your heart who you just think God is calling you to pray for, to support, then we take a moment to do that now. And Lord, we thank you for that peripheral vision where we have people in our orbits. And so we pray, Lord God, old or young, we lift them to you in prayer now. May they know the warmth of our love, but may they know the fire of your love for them. And we pray for ourselves that we may be uh, faithful in prayer, encouragers and supporters with those around us so that we may have a sincere hope, a firm foundation on which to grow. So come, Holy Spirit. I will build my life upon your love. It is a firm foundation. I will trust my trust. In you alone, and I will not be shaken, and I will build my life upon your love. It is a firm foundation, and I will put my trust in you alone, and I will not be shaken. Holy, there is no The risen Christ came and stood amongst his disciples and said, Peace be with you. Then they were glad when they saw the Lord. Alleluia. The peace of the Lord be always with you. So before we gather around the Lord's table to take bread and wine, we take a moment to share the peace of God with those around us. In other words, saying, That which resides within me of God himself, I long for him to bless you too. So let's share the peace together, shall we?
Okay, when you've done that, why don't you take a seat? We are going to share communion together, sharing bread and wine as a reminder of all that God has done for you and for me. And so the Lord's table is open to all who long to serve him, who long to utter the lips of Jesus, uh, the lips of name of Jesus upon your lips, uh, Lord. So that's, uh, that's the reason why we do it. So we draw close to God himself. So words will come up on the screen. Oh, they're already there. Excellent. The Lord is here. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to praise you, Father, Lord of all creation. In your love, you made us for yourself. When we turned away, you did not reject us, but you came to meet us in your Son. You embraced us as your children and welcomed us to sit and eat with you. In Christ, you shared our life that we might live in him and he in us. He opened his arms of love upon the cross and made for all the perfect sacrifice for sin. On the night he was betrayed, at supper with his friends, he took bread and he gave you thanks. He broke it and he gave it to them, saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, we do this in remembrance of him. His body is the bread of life. At the end of supper, taking the cup of wine, he gave you thanks and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shared for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, we do this in remembrance of him. His blood is shed for all. So as we proclaim his death and celebrate his rising in glory, send your Holy Spirit that this bread and this wine may be to us the body and blood of your dear Son. And as we eat and drink these holy gifts, Make us one in Christ, our risen Lord. So with your whole church throughout the world, we offer you this sacrifice of praise and lift our voice to join the eternal song of heaven, saying together, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. I am going to uh, invite those who are going to help me serve communion, uh, to come towards the platform. I'm going to break some bread, and then I'm going to share it out amongst those who are going to serve. Uh, and we will have a station here on my right, one on the left, one here in the front. If you would like uh, non-alcoholic wine, please make sure you come to the one at the front and ask. And if you would like gluten-free bread, please come to the, front, uh, come to the station at the front here in the center and ask as well. So Jesus says, I am the bread of life. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. Lord, we praise you and we thank you. Amen. So give that to you.
dust lay wet, the morning sun is dead, the Savior of the world was fallen. His body on the cross, his blood poured out for us, the weight of every curse upon him. sing hallelujah we sing hallelujah we sing hallelujah that is overcome we sing hallelujah we sing hallelujah we sing hallelujah that is overcome we sing hallelujah we sing hallelujah we sing hallelujah, the Lamb is overcome. We sing hallelujah, we sing hallelujah, we sing hallelujah, the Lamb is overcome. The ground began to shake, the stone rolled away, His perfect love could not be overcome. Now death where is your sting, our resurrected King, has rendered the Jews defeated. Forever He is glorified, forever He is lifted high. began to shake, the storm was rolled away, His perfect love could not be overcome. Now that praise your sting, a resurrected King has rendered you defeated. Forever He is glorified, forever He is led.
Shall we stand again and sing that forever? He is risen. He is alive. He is alive. The ground began to shake. The stone has rolled away. His perfect love could not be overcome. Now death is your sting. A resurrected king has rendered you defeated. Forever he is glorified. Forever he is lifted high. Forever he is risen. He is alive. He is alive. Living God, your Son made himself known to his disciples in the breaking of bread. Would you open the eyes of our faith, that we may see him in all his redeeming work. For he who is alive and reigns, now and forever. Amen. As we go into our final song of worship, we remind you that uh, our prayer team are willing to pray. So please don't leave this space without seeking prayer. Uh, or seeking the prayer with those around you. We want to be a church which is praying. Not because that sounds like a good thing to do, but prayer is what is vital in everything that we do as we stay connected, committed, and loving and serving the Lord Jesus. We worship together this final song.
the past You've broken in two Over fear, over life You're singing the truth Nothing is impossible caught me out there. Thank you, Royce. We draw our service to an end. Thank you, Royce and the band. Thank you, tech team. Thank you, person doing the words. Difficult one to keep going back and forth. Well done for eventually getting there. We really, really appreciate all you do at the back there. Uh, don't forget this afternoon, our prayer time at 4.30 yeah, here in church. Uh, our APCM on Wednesday at 7. And also, you may have noticed in the uh, weekly news, uh, a big congratulations to Paul and Debbie who got engaged during the week. Uh, Debbie is, Deb, Debbie's not here because she's run off, her daughter is about to give birth. So we're also excited about that for Debbie too. Let's pray, shall we, as we head out on uh, our journeys this week. Lord God, you call us, you lead us, you love us. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Lord God, would you go with us this week into all we do, into all we say, and may we be bold like Eunice and Lois and speak into the lives around us. In Jesus' precious name. And the people of God said, Amen. Amen. Have a great week and we'll see you on Wednesday or Sunday if sometime. Bless you. Take care. Storm was rolled away. It was perfect love tonight. Be overcome. The devil is your sting. A resurrected king has rendered you defeat.